Hi Floss Tube. This is Nancy Quilting Stitcher. Welcome to my channel. Today is March 7th, I believe. Um, this is only my fourth time trying to do this video between my husband texting me because he's out doing errands and I thought I could get this video done when he's out doing errands and he keeps texting me, asking me questions. And then my dog barking because he wants my attention, I guess. I don't know. I am having a heck of a time doing this. And you're hearing him barking. I finally locked him in my bedroom. And you're going to hear him bark until he decides he's not going to win this battle. So anyway, <laughs> so, oh, welcome, welcome. <laughs> um, I'm just going to get right into this because I just want to, I want to get this video done before my husband comes home. So no chit chat today, just showing stuff. Okay. So when I go into, um, thrift stores, I, I buy my all my frames at thrift stores and I try to buy unique frames and different shapes of frames rather than the standard standard frames because um, most things you stitch are not standard size. Anyway, well, when I was doing the Clara Ellen chart from Blackbird's Design, the one that I did in memory of my grandma, um, it, I needed a square frame. So I went to... Um, a couple of different thrift stores and I just bought different square frames, different sizes and um, different styles, but they were all square. And I brought them home and there was a couple I was kind of thinking about using and then I put them up there. I just didn't really like them and I thought, well, I could paint them. Anyway, well then, <coughs> excuse me. Last Friday night, my husband took me out to dinner for our anniversary. And I says, hey, let's stop by the thrift store really quick. I want to look at the frames. So we did, and I found this frame. And I thought, well, I could paint it and all that. And then I got looking at it, and I thought, nope. It's perfect. It's perfect how it is. It's The color is perfect. And it, it, it was just right. So... Now, mind you, I do my own framing, so things are not perfect inside my frames, but you know what? It's for me. It's not, um, I'm not showing these or anything, so so bear with me because it is not absolutely perfect inside a frame. But this is it. This is in honor of my, my maternal, my mom's mom, my maternal grandmother, and her name was Clara. And this frame... Actually, the color of this frame matches the chimney, the door, and this brown part down here. Perfect. It's like the same color. So this is framed, all ready to go into my china hutch. Um, the one other thing I'm going to do when I make these, because it, they have a name and their birth date and their death dates on here. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a picture. This is my grandma. Um, 1974 is when this picture was taken of my grandma. And I am going to put these a picture of each one of who I'm doing the piece in memory of on the back of this. And I'm just going to... Um, tape it on probably I have some because I used to be a scrapbooker I have some acid free um, double side sticker things to put on the, they're called photo photo splits or something like that and I can I'll just use that to attach it to the back um, don't look at my ghetto framing because like I said it's not going to be judged it's just for my benefit no one's going to see the back but I want to put a picture on the back of each piece of who it is in memory of so that future generations, when they see this, they'll have a picture to know who it goes with. And um, I am going, I need to take this down. I'm going to take it down and um, down to probably Walgreens and scan it and have, the, and have a picture printed out so that, um, because I don't want to use my, this is my original, and I don't want to put it on here. So that that's what I'm going to do. So there's that. That was a finish. Um, the next thing I have 
is from, well, oh, here it is. No notes. Everything's kind of scattered, so it's going to be, this is going to be a mixed mash. Everything's going to be mixed into everything else. So the next one I want to show you, this one is by Lizzie Kate. I stitched it in 2015. It is called Let Them Be Small. And it says, you will never have this day with your children again. Tomorrow they'll be older than today. This is a day. This day is a gift. Just breathe, notice, pay attention, enjoy today. It will be over before you know it. And this is something I tell my kids all the time when their kids are driving them crazy and they start complaining and I'm like enjoy them because pretty soon they're going to be adults and they're going to be having their own kids and you're going to wish that you could have that time back so anyway this is another um frame that I found at the thrift store it is exactly as um the frame is exactly as, as it was. I thought it was perfect just the way it was. So this is now framed. And um, it was stitched in just all DMC colors. Um, I believe the fabric is, it's 14 count eight. It looks like I tea dyed it or copy dyed it um, very lightly. I didn't do a whole lot of, I didn't stain it too, too dark. You can just barely see the, the mold, uh, modeling in it. Um, in our spare bedroom is our guest room, but it is also the room that I call my grandkids' rooms. Um, it has a bed in there, so if we do have company come over, they can stay in the bed. Sometimes my grandkids sleep in the bed. Sometimes they choose to just sleep on the couch. Um, I do have toys and games and things like that in there. In that room above the bed, I am going to make it my sampler wall. And so as I cross stitch samplers, I'll frame them and hang them on the wall. And this is going to go on that wall. So anyway, I love it. I, this frame, I, th I, I originally bought this frame for a different um, piece that I have. And the piece did not fit into it. It's, the piece is too big to fit in the frame. And so I just was looking through all my other finishes and I thought, oh, that, that's going to be pretty in there. And it is. It's, it's really pretty. So there's that one. And then, um, okay, the next thing I want to show you, I want an opinion. So this is another piece that I um, stitched a long time ago, back in 2006. I'm going to see... Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so I stitched this piece in 2006. It is by Bent Creek. Um, it's called Let Us Be Thankful Roll Row. It is still available on One Two Three Stitch. I did check before I did the video. And I have several of these row patterns. Okay, so when I bought these other two frames, I found this frame. And when I found the frame, I had no intentions of using it right away. I had gotten it. And I thought I'll just put it in my box of frames because something will come up. And something did come up. Sorry, there's something on my computer here. Okay. Hopefully... That shouldn't come up on the camera. I hope not. Sorry. I had to, I didn't know what it was. And it was, anyway, I don't want it to mess up my video. Okay. So I stitched this in 2006. Yeah. Like 12, what, 12 years ago. And I do have several of these charts. Um, but I was looking at this frame and I thought, ah, that would be perfect in it. What do you think? It does, this frame does have a little scuffed up spot here, but I can, I think I can just put a little bit of stain in there because I like the frame and I like the frame just how it is. It's kind of classic, kind of old, classy. I don't know. I like it. Um, okay. So my thought, 
I have several of these Bent Creek row pieces. Do not, I don't have them stitched up, I, but I do have the charts. And so what I would like to do is I would like to make this interchangeable. Now it does come with the glass. I did take everything out of it. There's nothing in here, but I do have the glass and I have the back. And I want to make it interchange, but I want to make it interchangeable because I think I have a 4th of July one and I have one um, that I would use for September because it has like school, I think it's called schoolhouse row or something like that. Um, I have a, I think a summer one. Um, I would make sure that wasn't my husband coming in because I was going to shut the door. Sorry. Now I sneeze. Now my nose is going to run. So anyway, so I have several that I can, I have a Merry Christmas one. I think it's a Merry Christmas. Anyway, so I want to make this so it's interchangeable. But I really kind of like it inside the frame rather than Priscilla-fying it. So tell me, so, so those are two options. So my two options are to put it inside the frame and then when, as I stitch the other ones, um, I can just stick them, you know, behind. I don't know if, I know when my kids were little, okay, let me back up a little bit. When my kids were little and they, we would do school pictures, I had their pictures hanging on the wall in a frame. So that when, and what I would do is when their new school picture would come out, I would leave all their other pictures in there but I would put the, the newest one at the front. So when we opened up the frame, it had like several years worth of school pictures in there. So that's, so that's kind of my idea on this. If I did frame it like this, then I could just open up the back and change them out for the seasons, but just leave them stored inside the frame like I did with my kids' school pictures. And that would put this, and it would put it under glass because I would put glass, anything I put in frames, I usually put glass, <coughs> excuse me, behind it. So what do you think? Should I do it that way? Or should I Priscilla-fy it? Where I mount this on mounting board. I don't use sticky board. I don't like sticky board. Um, but I, I could mount it on mounting board and then put magnets on it and put the magnets on the glass on the front and then change it out that way or should I do it this way my husband says this way he says to put it under the glass he likes it better like this so it's inside the frame rather than pretty much on the outside so what do you think you tell me tell me what you think I should do because I can't decide but I that frame is perfect for that I'm going to I'm going to use that frame for that um whether I do it the Priscilla's way or whether I frame it. And anyway, so there's that. Um, what else? So the other day I have a friend that um, I met through FlossTube. She watches my FlossTube videos and she had messaged me on Facebook because she belongs also to my um, my Facebook group, Quilting Stitcher. And she had messaged me on Facebook. And we just kind of started talking back and forth on Facebook. And then we exchanged um, phone numbers. And so now we text back and forth. And and um, she lives quite a... She lives in a few states away from me. So um, probably... We probably will never meet. But... But never say never because you never know what happens. Maybe one of these days after we both, I don't know, maybe one of these days we'll meet at a retreat or something. I don't know. We'll see. Not that I plan on going to taste it to retreats in the near future. But um, anyway, she, so we've been texting back and forth and everything. And we were discussing Vana's video that she did um, back in January. I think it was her first one she did in January and she had stitched a snowman and then she had taken um, half of a plastic ornament and put it on the front and so it looked like and she'd put stuff in it so it looked like a snow globe she doesn't have a tutorial out on it yet um, 
if you want to watch her, it's like, it was like four, maybe four videos ago. I'm, I'm not sure. It's the first one, in, her first one she did in January of this year. Anyway, so, um, and she said eventually maybe she will do a tutorial on it, but she wants to perfect it first before she does the tutorial. So she does not have a tutorial. But anyway, we were discussing this and we thought, oh, these are so cute that maybe we should try these. And Vonna had mentioned that she had got the ornaments, the plastic ornaments at Hobby Lobby. Anyway, so the other day I was getting ready for work and just before I was getting ready to walk out the door, the UPS man showed up at my doorstep. I love my UPS man. He's, he's so nice to me. He always brings me fun stuff. Anyway, so um, the UPS man showed up and I had this box. And I knew that she had gotten these ornaments for me. And she had said she had put something in the mail for me. So I was expecting the ornaments. That's not all I got. So I want to show you what I got. So she sent me, first of all, she sent me this card for St. Patrick's Day. Isn't that cute? And she put a little note in it. And so I'm going to put this out on my, on my hutch for, for, um, the month of March. And then it will probably go up on my little, this thing is a crib mat, is the bottom part of a crib mattress or a crib, a baby's crib. And someone had gave it to me because I went on our local uh, Facebook buy, sell, and trade group. I don't know what it is. Anyway, and I asked him, anybody, do you have an old? And I was just going to, I was planning on buying it. And the lady says, she messaged me. She says, I have one. This is where I live. You'll be sitting out front. Come get it. So I went and picked it up. Anyway, I put my, um, my acrylic rulers for quilting on there. Um, I have my best press and the spray bottle. This is an old pin cushion that belonged to my mom. Anyway, so I put cards and stuff, stuff that means something to me. Whoops, I just lost something. I put cards that, um, you know, mean something to me. So I'm going to put this card up on that rack. Anyway, so she sent me not one. So this is, this would be. To do it the way Vonna do it, you could do two, two ornaments with these because these do snap together. So you could, oh, I dropped it. You could do two ornaments. But she did not just send me enough to do two ornaments. She sent me enough. I could do ten ornaments. So now I'm just on the perfect, on the lookout for the perfect snowman to win these ornaments. So those are, I'm so excited because we don't have a Hobby Lobby, so I can't. Like, if I see these things, I can't just run down to Hobby Lobby. Although, it was announced a couple of weeks ago that we are getting a Hobby Lobby in the town that is only 40 minutes away from me. 40 miles away from me, so it takes us about hmm, half hour to get there. Spending a lot of time in that town once it opens up. So anyway, what else did she send me? So not only did she send me those, she sent me some other fun, fun stuff. She sent me these. They are needle threaders. She said she has saw these on someone else's video and she thought maybe I would like one or two. So she gave me two, which is nice because it seems since I hit 50, I have a hard time seeing the eye of the needle. Is it just because I turned 50 that that happened? I don't know. Anyway, so that'll be interesting. Oh, and they have a light to come in. So, oh, that's cool. So you push the button up, a wire comes out that you put your thread on. And when you push up, not only does the wire come out, and light comes on. Cool. So now that I've shown these, I can play with them and use them. And then. I, she also sent me some magnets or needle minders that she made. And this one will go really cute on that, um, the farmhouse Christmas when I decide to do it. And, um, also on the chop, chop on the farm, is that what it's called? So anyway, cool. 
And then she also sent me, let's see, there's one other thing. She sent me this. And I will use this. This isn't this cute. It's a little bunny. And watch. It's a tape measure. Isn't that cute? And you just push his nose and it goes back up in. I'll use this with my quilting for sure. And then she sent me, this is amazing, okay? So I have never, ever, ever had a scissor fob. Never have. Um, she made me a scissor fob. This is adorable. Isn't that cute? And it's got buttons and beads and it has, let's see if I can find it. It has a little angel wing, little angel wing, little angel wing um, on it. And a little charm down here that says dream. But isn't that adorable? Now I just got to figure out which scissors I want to put it on. Maybe I'll put it on whatever project is my favorite for the year that I'm working on. My favorite one that I'm working on. I don't know. But I thought that was adorable. Put this back over here. And not only that, show me something else. Isn't that cute? Adorable. And it's filled with chocolate. And she knows me very well. She must listen because she's got Reese's peanut butter cups and kisses in here. And Hershey's is my absolute favorite. So anyway, thank you, Diane. I really, really appreciate it. I love it. I love everything that I got. Just makes my heart warm. So anyway, then I decided before I started the video, I walked out and got my mail because I was expecting the package and it was in the mail today. So, and plus I had another package. So I have another stitchy friend that I have never met. Um, I've, we've, I know I've mentioned her on my video. Her name is Sandy and she lives clear across the country from me. And, um, she's been my friend for, oh, probably 15 years and we met through one, two, three stitch on their message board. And she was asking about, um, scrapbooking and that's, so I said, Hey, email me and we'll talk. And that's kind of how our friendship started. And so we shared our love of scrapbooking. She still, I think does scrapbooking. I don't scrapbook anymore, but she is also a card maker. She makes beautiful cards. And, um, anyway, we had, okay. So I had never heard of a needle minder until I started watching floss tube, what back in, I think September. And, um, and that's when I heard what a needle minder is. And, and I think I love them. I love needle minders. Anyway. So, um, she had never heard of a needle minder until I told her about them. So, um, she, and I've sent her a couple of needle minders that I have made. And so she's kind of been on the hunt for things to make needle minders out of. And so she sent me some buttons that she had found. So she sent me these buttons to make needle minders out of. And then she also sent me some wooden buttons to make needle minders out of. And there are some really cute ones in here. There's a frog and there's a snowman. Um, there's a monkey, a Santa Claus, an umbrella. This umbrella is really cute. I thought that would be a cute one for a Valentine's one. And this elephant. So anyway, so she sent me some buttons. Thank you, Sandy. Um, so anyway, the other package that was in there was my Victoria Motto's Threads of the Month. And I'm going to try. I can hear my dog. <laughs> He's sniffing under the door of my bedroom. Anyway, um, my Victoria Motto uh, flosses were in there for, for the month of March. 
and she sent them in this little box and I did have opened up the box and looked at them um, so there I decided I upped my subscription I was doing the six every month and I upped it to eight every month or to 12 every month so these are what she sent me so this is what I got for this month I'm just going to show you these four at a time so that I can, um, I don't know if this is going to work, so I can show, I'm just going to show you two of them four at a time. There's no way I could hold all 12 at one time. But these are shades of aqua and green. And if they match a DMC number, she does include the DMC number on um, the card, but if if they don't, then she just puts none. So these these ones are called cor coral coastal seaweed coastal seaweed um, mint tapestry blarner blarney green. I can't. That's a word I can't say. I can't say burly either. <laughs> okay, so sorry. Blarney green and Tropical Wonder. Aren't those just gorgeous? This one does have a lot of modeling in it, where these other three, they are just slight modeling. So there was those four. The next four, I want to show you. These are more of the coral and orange colors that she sent. Get those. This is a this is an orange. This is more of like a terracotta, and this is like a salmon, and then a pink. So we got shades of coral, pink pearl, Tahitian floral, and glowing campfire. Those are very, very pretty. And then I got these ones. And these are all shades of blue. Shades of blue. This is kind of an aqua blue. This one is kind of a, I would call it country blue. And then there's kind of a gray blue. And this one is a navy blue. And this one's called Formal Garden, Old Salem Spell, Lingering Twilight, and Cheerful Blue. So there's those. Very, very pleased. I am, every time I get my floss from her, I am very, very pleased. Um, also this week, we're just going to continue with haul. Also, also this week, I got my needle minder from Down Sunshine, Down Sunshine Lane. I do belong to their needle minder of the club. Little chocolate Easter bunny. He is cute. I got that. And I got my fabric from Crazy Annie's. Um, I belong to her fabric of the month club. And it is picture, it's called Dapple by Picture This Plus. So, and it's quite, it's quite a big piece. Oh, it is actually 18 by 27. So I love their fabric. I have never had fabric from Picture This Plus until I joined this um, Fabric of the Month Club. I am very, very impressed with their fabric. I really like it. Their colors are very pretty and it's soft. It's not stiff Ada. It's very, very soft. And I know other floss tubers have, have said the same thing about their fabric. Um, what else have I gotten? Long May She Wave. This is by Little House Needleworks. Um, there are three in the series. They do come with the floss. And there's um, Land of the Free, which I've already shown you in a video because I already got it. Ooh. Um, excuse me. I have things falling. Um, this is Long May She Wave, and then I also have Home of the Brave, 
that is coming. Um, it was on back order from 123 Stitch, but I did get an email, I believe, yesterday saying the package is in the mail. So, and um, Mel stitched these up. Um, her channel name is what little ye little little yellow house or something like that. I'm not sure. I'll link her below. But she she stitched all three of these together and they were so pretty. Anyway, she's the one that enabled me. Now, and then also, I'm just gonna briefly show these because everybody has seen them. Um, Crazy Annie's, I also belong to Auto Ship for the, oh, sorry, that, I'm showing the chart, sorry. Um, for the Farmhouse Christmas, Horse and Around, and then the Chalk on the Farm by Hands on Design. So I got those in the mail this week. Um, I'm not impressed with this one. I don't know that I will even stitch it. It was because I did do the auto ship for the whole series. I did get it. But I don't know that if... I don't know that if I was just to buy the series individually, if I would have bought this one. I don't plan on doing them all together. Um, I'm going to do them individually. I already have an idea of when I, when I do them, how I'm going to finish them. Also got my issue of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher. Um, I kind of have been waiting for this one because I got some Punch Needle stuff for Christmas. And I'm anxious to, to try a Punch Needle. And so, but I didn't want to, the only other one I have of this is Christmas. And I didn't want to do a Christmas one. Um, I want to do a spring one. So I was excited to get this one. And I think I am going to attempt this one. We will see for my first punch meal. It looks small. It is small. And um, I'm just going to pull out some DMC that I have and just use it. So I think, oh, the other thing I did is this is not, this is not cross stitch. But I, we have a quilting store. Um, it's pretty, a pretty well-known quilting store. Here in our area, um, I do know that people, um, it's just very well known in the community, in the quilting community, um, if you're coming through our area. I don't go into this quilting store very often because um, they really, really mark their fabric up. I can get the exact same fabric, fabric line, fabric brand, everything, um, designer, everything online for about five dollars cheaper a yard so I do not buy my fabric in this fabric store or in this quilting store it is and also I think the people are rude and I don't know how to explain it I just when I go in there um, they I don't know I just, I don't go in there very often. In fact, I go in there once a year. And the reason I went in there um, just the other day was because I was putting, I'm um, taking the flyers and stuff for the quilt retreat that um, I'm going to. My sister-in-law sent me a whole bunch of the, the bookmarkers and um, the, the, the flyers to go in the windows. And so I took some stuff over there to see if they would put them in their window. And, um, why I was in there, I I have been wanting to do wool applique. I've never done it before, and I just wanted to see if I can do it. And um, because I see people, especially on floss tube, um, show some of the wool applique they do, and it's just beautiful. So I want to see. I wanted to see if I could do it. And so I thought, well, I'll, while I'm in here, I'm gonna look for maybe just a small kit. And they did have a small kit. I actually bought a little bit more than I should have because to spend, I don't know. I just don't like giving them my money because I think they're rude. But anyway, I, I did buy a few things. I bought this. This is the small wool applique quilt or kit that I bought. And it's just a little pin keep. And it comes with all of the stuff to make it. And I really like sheep. Sheep, I think, are... I really like sheep. I don't know. So I bought that. And then while I was in there, I bought this. Now this is, I thought this would be cute in my sewing room. This is embroidery. 
just hand embroidery. But what they had done is they had taken different elements of this. I'm going to hold it up here closer so you can see it. They had taken different elements of this and used wool on it. Like, for instance, um, okay, so it's the saw machine, but on the flag here, they had used wool. And on the bird, the crow, they had used wool. And on this part of the saw machine, they had used wool. So they had taken different elements. They had embroidered it, and then they took it different elements and um, did wool embroidery on it. And I thought that would be cute in my sewing room. And this was this actually a seasonal one. They had, this is called Sewing in Summer. They had one for spring. They had one for Halloween. Um, they had a Christmas one. And I liked the, the one with the flag because I like patriotic stuff. And so that's, that's why I chose this one because I didn't want to buy them all. They were, they're kind of pricey. And then I thought this would be cute. It's wool applique. And I thought that would be pretty easy to do. And then, because I don't know how to do wool applique, so what makes you think I could do a quilt using wool applique? I don't know. But this pattern that I got, you can use wool, which they had done the wool, the quilt is using wools, because they had one on display in there. But then I was looking at, I was watching a video. It's someone new that I found. Her name is. Um, Kathleen. Kathleen's Trodden Trail. And I know she's been around for a long time and I know she's very popular on Floss Tube. I just discovered her. My friend Diane, who sent me these um this stitching sprinkle stuff, um, she says, You need to go check her out. You would really like her. And Diane, my friend Diane's been watching her for a while. So I went and checked her out and she had a no, it wasn't her, it was um It wasn't her. It was um, stitching. What is her name? Stitching between lines. I'm going to look her up really quick. Because I want. Anyway, it was her last video. Um, I'm sorry. Not prepared. No notes. Um. <laughs> But I want, you can go and check out her, sorry, stitching, stitching between the lines. Go check her out. She had had this quilt on display in her house and she took it down because winter's, you know, over and she put a, another, a different quilt up and it's because she hangs the quilts on her walls and she put it a different one in her, um, in its space, but she wanted, she showed this quilt and, but she had done hers with cottons instead of wools. Now I've already ordered, um, the wool fabric for it's, it's wool felt or wool flannel. Maybe I'm not sure. I've already ordered it for this, but you could make this with cottons too. So I may make two. I don't know. We'll see. Or I may take elements out of this and use the wool and just make like wall hangings, but make the quilt out of the cotton. I don't know. I haven't decided. But this is the quilt I bought. Or the, the pattern. Not the whole quilt. But so anyway, I thought that was so cute. With the red truck and the tree. It says fresh trees. Um, farm fresh trees. This little snowman inside of the mason jar mason jars upside down um the back side of the truck the barn mason jar with candy canes in it anyway so go check out her last video i'm um, stitching between the lines sorry 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 i got that wrong but she she shows the quilt and she's she's done hers in cottons anyway so that's what i've got that is all my haul Okay, so now I'm 40 minutes into this video and I haven't even done stitchy stuff. So I'm going to show you, oops, let me just go, um, my whips, my works in progress. I've actually got a lot. And then I'll show you my quilts and we will be done. Show you a couple of quilts today. 
Um, so the first one I'm going to show you is called Cross Stitch Nation. It's by Heartstrings Samplery. This is what it looks like. And this is where I'm at. Don't mind it. I am using all of the called for. Um, I'm using all DMC flosses. I am not using the the over dyed flosses. So I'm doing the DMC conversion. And I think last time I showed you this, I had. I don't know if I had this filled in on the girl or not on her dress. But I, I know I didn't have him done. So he's done. Um, no, he's not done. I still need to finish his hat and his shoes. And then he will be done. She is completely done. So there's that one. And then, let's quickly stick these in here. Not in any, and so it stays kind of organized. Then the next thing I worked on this week, I started this on March 1st, and this is Country Cottage Needleworks, um, Santa's Village, and this is the post office, North Pole Post Office. I don't know if you can see that or not. And this, I've worked on it a couple of days, but I did start, start it on March March 1st. So I got the top border done and the bottom border, sorry, it goes from this curly cue over and I I need, I'll have to move the cue snaps to, to go over there. And then I've started on the snow. So that started March 1st. I think I've worked on it two days is all I've worked on it. And I only worked on it a couple of hours on each of the days. Not a whole lot of stitching on this. So this is something I'm going to keep working really hard on because I really want to get it done in the next week or so. Next thing is on, oh, um, is birds of a feather, no bees, no honey. And this one I have worked, I'm not going to pull it out of the, out of the hoop. But um, last time I showed you, I don't think I had any of the brown in it. And so I got all the brown stripes in, and then I have put some of the green vines around it. That's what I've worked on on this one. Um, this one I also want to get done as quick as possible. So hopefully I can get some stitching time on it this week. Um, next, the next one I have worked on is, uh, my shepherd's bush stocking and this, it is, um, I think it's Reed's stocking is the name of it. That is what it's supposed to look like. And this is what I'm, I've actually got a lot more. Okay, so this is where I'm at. So last time I showed you, I had part of his, this is his coat. This is the, this is a shepherd and this is his coat. And when I showed you last, I had part of his, the blue on his coat done. So I have gotten the arm, his arm completely done. Um, this part of his gown I guess is what it is done. And then the rest of his, the blue on his coat, these stars. So I just need to fill in the lines on his coat and that will be done. His coat will be done. So another thing I am working really hard on because I am, my goal is to try to complete one of these a month. So working on that. Um, the last day of the month, so on February 28th, um, I worked on this, and the last day of the month is the days I'm going to work on this, just on the last day of the month, unless I get, unless I just decided I really just want to keep working on it, then I'll keep working on it. So I'm working on Hall uh, Lizzie Kate's Halloween rules. I am doing them all on one piece, and... I have two of them done. 
boom, I'm done. I think last time I showed you, I had B and I think I had the SP and then I had maybe the ULAR and this with the exclamation point done. So I did the pumpkins, the bones. I'm not sure what these are. They look like bats, but they look like upside down bats because I think if they were the other way, they would look like bats. Anyway, so that, and then this is the next block up, Howl at the Moon, and I got it completely done. So the next one on the list is this one, Greet a Ghost, is the next one up. So that's the next one I'll be working on. Um, I don't know that I will be working on this between now and my next video. Um, if I decide I want to, then I'll work on it. But it's not, um, this one is not a priority to get it done. So I may just work on, not work on it again until the end of the month. Until the last day of the month. Let's see. And the last one that I worked on this week is on, this is my patriotic piece. It's Celebrities Welcome. I'm not going to show you the picture because I've showed it a million times. Um, it's by Plum Street Sampler. And I'm only working this on this one on if I participate in Friday Off the Grid um, virtual stitch-in and on the 4th of the month. And I didn't work on it at all on Friday. Um, my husband was home and then we went out to dinner and we just did some things that day. So, but I did work on it on Sunday, which was the 4th. So, here is, let me see if I can fold this up so we don't have so much fabric. Here it is. So, on the, I had the, the roof completely done. So, on the 4th, I started outlining the house. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish outlining the house. And then that way I can go in and just mindlessly stitch it in and not have to worry about counting or anything. That's where I'm at on that one. So I may or may not pick this up Friday. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens come Friday. Because I don't, if I can do the virtual stitching, I do. If I can't, I can't. So we'll see if I work on this Friday. That's it. That is all I have to show today. Oh, my quilts. My quilts, my quilts. Okay, so I have my daughter and, sorry, my daughter and my son-in-law. Um, they have two children. And my daughter, they only had two children because my daughter gets violently ill when she is pregnant. And she was worse with her second one than she was with her first and when I say violently ill, from the moment from the moment of conception until after she has the baby, she is throwing up constantly. She has boarding sickness like no other. And she's done, she's tried, you know, during her pregnancy, she's tried different things um, to not have morning sickness or to, to not, not get rid of it, but, um, not make it so it wasn't so bad. And she was on a prescription anti-nausea medicine her whole pregnancies with both her pregnancies. And anyway, so they chose not to have any more children biologically, but they would like to adopt a baby. So they're in the process of doing what needs to be done to adopt a baby. And, um, Kind of their goal is they really don't want to go through an agency if they can prevent it because going through an agency is so expensive and um so kind of they've put word out through um, their church and people they go to church with and those people the people they go to church with with have put word out to their friends and family and they're kind of hoping that through this whole huge network of people that they will find a teenage girl that would like to give her baby up for adoption and that they could just do a private adoption rather than do it through an agency. Um, that's what they would really like to do. 
And so anyway, they're in the process. They, they've actually done their home study and, you know, done all of these steps. So they're just basically waiting now for the opportunity to, to come along for them to adopt a baby. So I make all of my grandkids when they're born quilts. And because, you know, usually I have nine months to prepare to make a quilt or, you know, or whatever. I, I usually hadn't started a quilt until after we knew the gender of the baby so I could make a boy quilt or a girl quilt. But because um, if with them trying to adopt, if they adopt a baby, they may just get a phone call one day saying, hey, we have a baby for you. And so we won't know if it's a girl or it's a boy, you know, it's not like we can plan. So I went ahead and I made two baby quilts, one for a girl and one for a boy. So if they get the phone call saying they have a baby, um, I have a quilt ready because um, I could probably make these quilts in just a couple of days, which would be fine. But to take them to the quilters does take a while. And so, um, unless I pay extra to kind of get me bumped up onto the top of the list and then, then, um, you know, I could get them done, but then it's going to cost me a fortune. So I went ahead and I made a boy quilt and a girl quilt. So that's what I'm going to show you today are these baby quilts. This is the girl one. I'm going to stand up so you can see. Hopefully you can see the whole thing. I'm going to pause you. My husband is home. Okay, sorry about that. My husband's home. So I made, this is the girl quilt. I don't know if you can see that or not. So this is kind of my own pattern. Um, I had seen a quilt similar to this posted online somewhere. I think it might have been on Pinterest and I thought I can make that quilt. So I just bought the fabric, all different kinds of girly fabrics and I made the quilt. And these are pinwheels that I have attached to the flowers for the center of the flowers. This is just Rick Rack on there. And then my quilter, I don't know if you can see, but I just had her do flowers all over on it. And then the back is just flannel. So there's the girl one. And then the boy one, something dropped. This is the boy one. I'm going to go ahead and stand up and show you this one. This is the boy one. one did take a while. This did come from a pattern that I purchased. Um, this is, you can actually make a, a, queen, a full size or queen size quilt out of it. This is just one section of that. So if you did four of these, you would get a full size quilt. And I just picked out, I knew I wanted red and brown, red and brown. And then I wanted one element blue because it was for a boy. So, oh, I guess I got red, brown, and orange, and then yellow. And then the one section is blue. And um, then I found this, this fabric, and it had every single color in it. So I used it for the binding and then flannel on the back. And it had every, every one of the colors in it. And this one, my quilter just did a meandering, um, a meandering stitch on it to finish it off. So anyway, those are my quilts. So plans for the week. Um, 
I'm going to keep working on Santa's Village, my stocking. I didn't work on the hometown holidays at all this last week. And so maybe I'll pull one of them out and see if I can finish. Um, I think it's the church I'm working on. Maybe I can get it finished. Um, and I think that's it. So thank you for joining me. And um, thank you for watching. Um, and I guess I will see you next week. Bye.